First Palm Media. You are listening to Mushing on First Paw Media. Visit our website at mushing.com. Nobody covers dog sledding like Mushing from First Paw Media. Our team of athletes, volunteers, race organizers, and mushers like Robert and Michelle Forto brings you closer to the sport. If it's happening, we are there. Live from the qualifying races in January and February, the Iditarod in March, and in the summer, Mushing takes you on the road with our team and trail tour. We connect you with a history of the sport, in-depth interviews with the top mushers, and great storytelling and breaking news all year long. Follow on mushing.com. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Robert and I am joined by my co-host Michelle and we are continuing our Iditarod coverage here on the Burled Arch. It is Thursday evening and we have been at this for more than two weeks now on our nightly coverage. So let's pick up where we dropped off last night. Coming in in the last 24 hours in 13th place, Matt Failer, Ryan Reddington, Josie Tier, Jason Mackey, Bailey Vitello, Gabe Dunham, Jessica Klika, Mats Peterson, Anna Barrington, Will Rhodes, Laura Kittleson are our finishers in Nome. Laura Kittleson came in about an hour and a half ago at the time of recording. So out on the trail still is Anna Hennessy, who has left check, uh, safety checkpoint, Benjamin Good, Sean Williams, Severin Cathry, Laurel Eklund, Jeff Reed, and Joshua Robbins. Josh is currently our Red Lantern holder, and unfortunately, as we expected, Bryce Mumford scratched in Uniclet after a very long haul up the Caltag Portage. So before we jump into any stories, it is interesting to note that uh, we're thinking about the Most Improved Musher Award, and we're wondering if it's going to be Jason Mackey. Last year, he was the Red Lantern winner, and this year, he finished in 16th place. Remember that the most Improved Musher Award goes to the musher that has improved the most from one year to the next. And Michelle and I were sitting here thinking, is it Jason or could it possibly be even Wally Robinson going back more than two decades? It will be interesting to see how the math plays out. And we also have our Rookie of the Year. That is Josie Tier. She finished yesterday at about 9.45 at night. So congratulations to her. And if you get a chance, head over to our other Mushing radio feed on mushing.com. And you can hear a very recent interview that I did with Josie right before she took off on the Iditarod Trail. And as we mentioned, Josh Robbins is our current Red Lantern holder. For folks that may not know, if you're new to following Iditarod, the Red Lantern is awarded to the last musher that comes into Gnome. So there we have it with our standings as we speak right now. Michelle, did you get a chance to watch the Insider at all today? And if so, what are some stories that we're developing? I did not get to watch as much of The Insider today as I would have liked to. I did read the article that they put up, uh, Mackie to Peterson. That was a very nice article that they wrote up about uh, a few of the mushers, not just Jason and Matt's. Um, but there were some things that were going out on the trail where, um, you know, Jason had a little bit of a rough patch around the blowhole area, um, and, uh, mentioning about Bailey Vitello's issue with the snow machine, which thankfully they are just fine. They talk about re-rookie Gabe Dunham. And I like that term, Robert. Some of these guys that were listed as rookies this year had participated last year, but had to scratch for various reasons. 
keeping them from getting that elusive belt buckle. And they are proudly wearing that badge of re-rookie. And now they can call themselves finishers and proudly display those buckles. For sure. And there's an interesting story over on I Did Rot Insider as well about Wally Robinson. And we've been covering his story pretty much the entire time we've been on. He has such a cool story about picking up the reins very late in the game because Josh McNeil went down with an injury. So Wally said, of course, I will do it and uh, jumped in and took off. And he did very well. He came in eighth place. And interestingly enough, when he crossed under the arch, he introduced himself as Emily Robinson's father. If you remember, Emily Robinson is the teenage phenom that is just killing it out there on these Alaskan races over the last year or so. I believe she has three junior Iditarod finishes right now. And he was asked if he would like to run the race again. And he said, it will likely be Emily or her younger brother, Stanley, that will take over the reins as well. And I thought that was pretty cool, uh, turning over the reins to his kids. And that's one of the main reasons why he got out of mushing is so he could concentrate on coaching his kids and getting them uh, the experience they need to one day run the last great race. What do you think about that, Michelle? Did you already play my 90-second interview with Wally? I believe I did, but we can drop it again. Let's do that right here. I'm here with Wally Robinson, and he looks like he's ready to go. He's still got tags on his deerskin gloves, but I think he's going to take care of that here in just a moment. Wally, you look like you're fresh and ready. What are you most excited about today? Um, Today, I think what I'm most excited about, probably like every other musher, just getting out on the trail. You know, it's... Uh, we did the ceremonial start yesterday and the, the mushroom meeting on Thursday. So, yeah, it's kind of drawn out here. But, yeah, getting on the trail is is nice. Then it's just focusing on you and your dogs and the trail in front of you. So I think that's what most of us are looking forward to. Absolutely. If you had to tell me, who is your favorite dog on your team? Uh, probably the favorite dog on my team is probably Urchin. Yeah, she's a good little leader. So That's awesome. How old is Urchin? She's four. Okay. And I already know, because somebody graciously told me, because you were my musher profile already for Mushing Podcast, I know that you like peanut M&Ms and chocolate chip cookies. But other than that, that's a lot of sugar. What else is your go-to? Uh, my go-to is I, I do like fish a lot. Uh, it's kind of hard to get anymore, but we used to, you know, use uh, Yukon River uh, King Salmon Strips, and those are nice because you can eat them in the cold. And But I do have a, a form of that, but it's not the traditional ones. But uh, I'll be taking... Yeah, some of that smoked salmon with me, that's, that's real nice food to eat. That, that is real nice food. That's fancy food. Um, and then lastly, what I've been asking everybody is, what is your favorite checkpoint to get to? I know you ran this before, but what's your favorite checkpoint that you want to get to this year? Well, actually, uh, I, I, I like all the checkpoints, but one I want to see that I've never been to um, on, the, on the northern route is Cripple. I haven't been on that section of trail from Olford or Ruby yet, so... Uh, but, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Cripple. Never been there, so, yeah, I want to check it out. So. That sounds fantastic. I wish you luck, and you're going to have a great time. I know that your kids are both going to be cheering you on. What do you think that you're looking to tell them when you finish about this race? Well, you know, obviously I'm, I'm looking forward to running it, and part of that is to do a little scouting out for Emily if she wants to run in the future here and then kind of get a game plan together for her. But, uh, no, you know, the, th the main thing is just uh, – you know, living your dreams and sticking to your goals and, and following through. So, yeah, that's, that's probably be my advice to them after I finish. Awesome. Well, I do appreciate your time, and I wish you luck in this year's I Did a Rod. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, you guys, I really enjoyed talking with Wally. And just a week or so before, I had gotten the pleasure of interviewing with his daughter. It was a lot of fun, but I got a kick out of the fact that – Wally was in full on dad mode. He was interested in checking out the trail that he hadn't been on in more than a decade so that he could make sure to give his daughter the right tips and tricks. Uh, yeah, I, I really like that. And another cool story uh, involves Aaron Burmeister and Ryan Reddington. As we know, Aaron scratched in Unicolite and he needed to find someone to carry his special cargo. 
And that was the ashes of Iditarod co-founder Howard Farley Sr., the rest of the way to Nome. So who better to do that than uh, the grandson of Joe Reddington Sr., Ryan, who knew Howard and carried his ashes and remains for the final 260 miles on the trail. That's pretty special. I didn't know about that at all. Yep, and, and that is pretty common occurrence to be able to do things like that, carrying that special cargo. I know that that has been done several times uh, over the years, and what a way to have that, uh, that last memorial. You know, Robert, a fan to mushing recently passed away, Mr. Daniel Lint, and his wife, Christy, posted today something pretty remarkable right along these lines. Did you know that Anna Barrington carried some of Daniel's ashes on the trail this year? That's pretty cool because Danny, excuse me, Daniel and Christy were huge fans of Iditarod. They were tireless volunteers. And unfortunately, he did pass away uh, this past year over a long battle with an infection. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it was a big deal. And I'm glad that he has that closure now for sure. So, Michelle, any other news before we jump into our story for tonight? I'm excited about my story tonight. We've got some real shakers going on out there. All right. So Robert gave me the spinning finger, which means to let's go ahead and rein this story in for you guys. I am calling this story Historical Feats by Inspiring Women. Women have been competing in Iditarod since its second year in 1974. Mary Shields was the first woman to finish the race, with Lolly Medley finishing just behind her by 29 minutes. Shields also ran the Yukon Quest and the 1,200-mile Hope Race held in the Russian Far East. Shields and Medley competed alongside some well-known dog mushers with names that still find their way to the roster today. Names like Mackie, Reddington, and CV. In 1978, Susan Butcher finished her first Iditarod in 19th place, bettering her time and place by 10, coming in 9th, the following year, becoming the first woman to complete Iditarod back to back and making a name for herself. By 1980, finishing her third Iditarod in a row, finishing fifth, with Libby Riddles arriving on scene and finishing 18th. Another woman named Donna Gentry finished 10th in 1980, while Dee Dee Genro finished 24th in her very first I Did a Rod finish. And rounding out the back of the pack were Marjorie Moore in 30th place and Barbara Moore collecting the Red Lantern that year coming in 36th place. 1980 was quite the year. And in 1980, for the first time, I Did a Rod hosted six women, the most to date competing equally amongst men. 1980 also had the most entrants with a total of 60 to date. Only 36 would complete the race that year. No women would scratch, however. In 1985, Libby Riddles became the first woman to win Iditarod in 18 days, zero hours, 20 minutes, and 17 seconds. Susan Butcher would become the second woman to win in 1986 in 11 days, 15 hours, 6 minutes, and 0 seconds. Up to this finishing time, the Iditarod was taking on average 12 to 20 days to complete. Butcher set a record with this 11 and a half day finish. Totally remarkable. She would break that time the following year in 1987 and in 1988 became the winningest 
Musher with three back-to-back wins. In 89, Susan came in second to Joe Runyon, but came back in 1990, winning her fourth Iditarod, (laughs) possibly with a vengeance. Susan would continue to finish Iditarod with her final one in 1994. Susan set the precedent for completing the race in under 12 days. She showed women they could compete strongly with men in this sport. And since Mary and Lolly entered the field back in 1974, paving the way, Susan made sure there has been a woman on the roster every year since 1978. This Iditarod is special because for the first time, four women finished in the top 10. Paige Drovny in fifth place, Millie Porcelet in seventh, Amanda Otto in eighth, and Jesse Royer in 10th place. And as of this recording, seven women finished in the top 20. Another record. 11 women competed in this year's Iditarod. Dog mushing has always embraced a co-ed field of competitors. While the human counterpart of the team will provide care of the team and strategy for competing, humans aren't competing alone. It truly is a team effort. And as they say, you're only as fast as your slowest teammate. During Junior Iditarod this year, there were several young ladies competing. In fact, there were more ladies than young men on the roster. 17, in fact, out of 21, which is truly extraordinary. Several will be going on to compete in Iditarod, and I do believe they will turn the sport on its head. Thanks for sharing that, Michelle. Hopefully that ends up in the current issue of Mushing Magazine that will be released toward the end of April, early May. Be sure to check out that. And if you have not subscribed already, head over to mushing.com slash mushing plus, and you can figure out which is the best subscription for you. And I have one more Ryan Reddington story to mention. It is about his dog, Wildfire. If you are an ardent fan of mushing, you know the story of Wildfire. He was injured in a snowmobile accident with a dog team in 2022, and he broke his leg in three places. And Ryan honored him in a couple of other races. He had his um, his braces and, you know, the braces that hold the a broken leg in place. He carried those with him on last year's Iditarod attached to his sled uh, right up by the handlebar. We are excited to announce that Wildfire is doing what he loves to do, and he is an Iditarod finisher. Wow, that is absolutely fantastic. Congratulations to Wildfire and Ryan. Okay, Michelle, who is our musher profile of the evening? Our musher profile this evening is Anna Hennessy. And I got to let you guys in on a secret. Anna is a nurse, an ER nurse, as a matter of fact. And she actually got into racing with a friendship she has with Aaron Artemis. They are both from Minnesota. And I just thought that was pretty cool how they both were in the race together. Anna runs the Shameless Huskies, which are Kathleen Frederick's dogs. And so she's out there with a pack of Huskies tearing up the Iditarod Trail. We are super proud of her for finishing. Now, she got into mushing, like I was saying, with a friendship she developed with Aaron back in 2018, but she made it to Alaska and decided to call Alaska home. Anna loves working with youth and in particular, she loves doing outdoor experiences and expeditions or trips with uh, female youth 
and those that consider themselves non-binary and BIPOC youth. So that is a very special group that sometimes don't get outside and learn how to enjoy the environment simply because they don't know that they should or can, and they most definitely should and can. So good job, Anna, for helping those uh, that don't think they should be outside, get outside. I'm definitely somebody that likes to do that myself. So Robert, do you know anything else about Anna? I do not. I reached out to Anna as well right before the race and did not hear back. I'd assume that she was busy prepping for Iditarod. Maybe we'll reach out to her after the finish. You can definitely check her out on AnnaInAlaska.net. She has a very cool looking website, definitely some information there that we should share as well. So Michelle, any other last minute stories before we jump over to what's happening in the next 24 hours? No, I think that that wraps it up for me. So I would bet in the last 24 hours, we will have just about everybody finishing. We do have Joshua Robbins in uh, the current Red Lantern position. He is 116 miles from Nome. Remember, he still has to do his mandatory eight there in White Mountain. The same with Sean Williams. And I believe Severin Cathry is in White Mountain at the time of this recording and should be working their way to the last couple of checkpoints and into Nome, if not late tonight, but early in the morning. So I'm excited for that. And what that means is we will have a Red Lantern winner or placer, if if I be so bold, before the, the banquet. And I think that is a very important milestone because in many years past, the Red Lantern would often come in after or during the banquet. So thankfully, uh, the race has sped up quite a bit in recent years and we should have everybody in well before the festivities on Sunday. You know, Robert, I did see Joshua's team come in to the checkpoint yesterday evening on his Facebook page. His dogs looked raring to go. They came in looking happy and not tired at all. He's maintaining a fairly decent speed throughout the race as well. About seven and a half to eight miles an hour, which is a good showing. And I'm sure that he's going to make it and hopefully they won't have to pull that elusive rule on him um i did see though before we close that bryce they were getting concerned about him and they did send out for a welfare check on him um due to how much he was slogging through the portage yeah and and typically when that happens uh, your race is pretty much over because they will go out there if uh, you're just moving too slow or you stop for a long time and they'll dispatch those guys out there and uh, if they accept any support what any support whatsoever the uh, the race is over whether that's uh, gathering food or snacks or or whatever it is over uh, one last thing about Josh in that red lantern position definitely go check out his Facebook page, Outreach 22. We talked about that uh, in previous days, but we might as well mention it again. He does a lot of great work for veterans in the local community and definitely something that we're going to check out and reach out to much later on. So with that, Michelle, we are out of time. We will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye. Are you a fan of the great outdoors? Do you enjoy the thrill of speed and adventure? Then listen up. Introducing Mushing, your ultimate guide to the exciting world of dog-powered sports and mushing. Whether you're a seasoned musher or just starting out, Mushing has got you covered. Get ready to immerse yourself in captivating stories of incredible sled dog races, expert training tips from seasoned professionals, and gear reviews to help you make the right choices for your team. 
From the breathtaking landscapes of Alaska to the snowy trails of Scandinavia, mushing takes you on a thrilling journey through the world of dog-powered sports. Don't miss out on the latest issue packed with exclusive interviews with top mushers, in-depth articles on sled dog nutrition, and stunning photography that will transport you to the heart of the action. So whether you're dreaming of competing in the Iditarod or simply want to learn more about this incredible sport, mushing is your go-to resource. Subscribe now and get ready to unleash your passion for mushing. Visit our website at mushing.com or find us on your favorite podcast platform. Mushing, where the spirit of adventure meets the power of the pack.